Welcome to the Eat Your Content Podcast, your home for all things food and pop culture. I am your host, Rich Herrera. Just a reminder to follow me on socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, at Rich Herrera and at Eat Your Content. Also, some programming reminders. Again, we're doing Top Chef recaps all season long, so make sure you like and follow on your podcast player of choice so you'll be notified of when the new episodes drop each and every week. And joining me again uh, to recap this Sausage Fest of a podcast is my guest, Chef Amadeus. <laughs> Chef, big fan of sausage. Do you, do you, do you like sausages? What, what's your take? I'm a huge fan of sausages, uh, all types, uh, all shapes. Uh, even the creative ones that that are being made out there, from like I've done the shrimp sausage, I've done you know different type things like that. But yeah, sausages is very versatile, very very versatile, and you can you can do them, flavor them, make them yourself, all that fun stuff. So yeah, I'm a oh, big yeah. fan. Yeah, big fan of sausages myself. I, I I'm particular to a Filipino sausage called Langonisa, my favorite sausage ever created it's it's so delicious so but we'll oh, talk about know, let me ask you this. how do you eat your your how do you eat yours oh uh, longuanisa in general i i uh throw them in a pan uh fill it up halfway with water let them cook on the inside and boil and then as the water evaporates uh i sear it and then it's done do you put it on a bun or you just eat it oh no i'll just eat it with a bowl of rice bowl of rice and a fried egg some soy sauce done my favorite way to eat a sausage is literally, and this is I, this is my my background. I like to uh, boil it till it pops and bursts, and the water get greasy from the juices. <laughs> a piece of bread, uh, coleslaw, uh, some mustard on it. Yeah, I like a sloppy dog. So yeah, I like a good oh, yeah. slaw dog. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm a, and I like it to be spicy. Man, that sounds good. Yeah. I think I'm gonna. Yeah, I think I, I'm I gonna like, have a like good it. old hot dog. My favorite has all grown up has been Roger Wood sausage, the spicy Roger Wood. They don't make, they say it's spicy, but it's not spicy like it used to be, and that's 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 sad. But yeah, um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm a sausage fan. So I I like the Filipino sausage, and then there's this one sausage made in uh, Alabama called Kaneka Kaneka sausage. Have you heard of those? They okay. sell them at Publix. Mm -hmm. They're great. Just they're they're made locally in Evergreen, Alabama. They're they're called Kaneka sausages. They're a little pricier, but man, they are delicious. The hickory smoke is so well, good. That's like that's like here in Jacksonville. We have Azar sausage. Yeah, know, Azar is right good. In, in my neighborhood that I grew up in as a kid, it's it's right there. Um, but yeah, like I say, put it on the grill, boil it in some water, whatever. But I like to pop open and 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 put it on the grill. I need a little char on it. Need a little yep. char, not a lot, but just a little. That's a little bit little char on it. Little char, nice little snap when you bite into it. That's delicious. So mustard and coleslaw, yeah. That's yeah, favorite. man, I'm getting hungry now. All right, let's get talk. Let's get to talking about. <laughs> let's get to talking about this episode. All this sausage talk. All uh, right, so jumping right in. So Rasika or Rasika was eliminated last week. Everybody's kind of feeling the the hole that she left behind, and and Danny found a new running buddy with Savannah. Um, and you know, Michelle also was talking about being on the bottom last week. She said it was a kick in the ass and that every day is another day to impress the judges. Um, so, you know, everybody's kind of reeling from you, you, you're only one bad dish away. You could, you could be the early favorite, but you're only as good as your last dish, as they say. So that's kind of what happened to Rosica last week, but she's in last chance kitchen, which we'll talk about later on, um, see how she did. So going right into the quick fire challenge. By the way, this quick fire challenge uh, recap is not brought to you by any corporate sponsors. <laughs> if you watch the episode, nope. the the corporate sponsors are are large and in charge. Uh, but this uh, this you know I'm not turning down any corporate sponsors if anybody's listening. So feel free to to jump into my email and and we'll talk. So the guest judge is Brian Voltaggio. He competed in Top Chef three times. He was a finalist in in three different Top Chefs. The man is uh, a legend in Top Chef, so a uh, very worthy judge. And the uh, the challenge today was to um, make a flambe dish in 20 minutes, and the winner gets 10K. So uh, what did you think about this initial, and this quick part was actually a two-parter, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but um, flambe dishes, what, what did you what did you think about that? Is it all flash, or, or is there an actual technique in flambe that matters, or, or what? There is a technique. Um, this goes back to the one spoon deal because 
I was looking for it to be flambéed at the judges' table. Oh, like table and side flambé. Table side flambé. But I mean, they all did they they did their thing, and as you as you see, they all did it with a purpose of smoking this from it or something like that. So there there is a a it just don't set something on fire. There's a yeah. reason why you do why you flambe something, and it goes with the, the the liquor that you're doing it with, and the flames, and the, it it just all goes together um, when you do that. So like they say, just don't just flambe just to flambe. That just that's yeah, not it, a good thing. It burns off the alcohol, right? So you get the the flavor right. like if you're using like bourbon or something, you get the flavor of the bourbon without all the alcohol in it. So that's that's the purpose of the flambe, and it's very flashy, very flashy. Uh, yes. Lots of lots of slow mo shots in this episode. I mean, I haven't seen so many slow mo shots since the last Sna- Zack Snyder movie I went to go see. You you wonder if he uh, directed this episode, but you know I get it. Fire's pretty, <laughs> so fire, fire's pretty. So, uh, but there's a twist. So everybody's cooking and everybody's getting judged and everything. But there's a twist at the end where there isn't a bottom three. There's only a top three in the quick fire. And then Kristen lays it out that says, okay, you three are going to have a cook off. And then that winner is actually going to win the quick fire and actually get $20,000. So the the pot is sweetened with $20,000. So here are the top three that made it to that through that first round of the quick fire. So Kevin, Amanda, and Danny, Uh, Kevin made a grilled shrimp flambe au pastis uh, with fennel potato puree, Kristen's favorite dish texturally. Amanda uh, had the French toast brioche uh, cacaccia flambéed mango with lime coconut and vanilla uh, meringue. Uh, they said it was a great bite of fruit toast and meringue. Now, this dish was the one I wanted to eat the most. I mean, I have a sweet tooth that is a mile long. And this one, just like you, you told me, you flambéed <laughs> mango and I had a vanilla meringue with lime and coconut. Man, I was wanting to lick the television screen. It looked so good. And then Danny had grilled prawns with satsuma and habanero sauce, flambe mezcal, uh, and his aqua chile stood out. And the judges said he had a great smoky use of mezcal. Uh, What did you think of these three as they were cooking? What kind of things stood out to you as you were watching? You know, you're watching as a chef, and I'm sure the gears are turning in your head. Uh, For me, it was like, man, I want to eat all these. But for you, what were you watching in the cooking technique? Well, the char. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, I like how the fish was put on a grill. It wasn't directly on the grill, but it was just he put that grill down. It's just those little techniques that you learn over the years of how to do things. Um, so yeah, I was just, just looking at the char. Yeah, so that was the second part of the quick fire. So those three made it through the first part of it. And then so they had a cook off to determine the winner, which was so you flambe the first time. Now we want to see you char something this time. And you get 20 minutes to do it again. So Kevin made a charred squab uh, breast with green curry yogurt sauce, a panko fried squab and toasted almond. Uh, Amanda made a glazed veal chop with grilled and charred corn relish and peach pickles. And Danny made a charred bronzino with charred poblano puree and charred avocado. Uh, So overall, the judges thought that uh, Danny's fish was well-cooked and he loved the added avocados. Kevin executed his dish really well, but Brian wished that there was more char in the squab. Kristen said she could eat 12 of those things. And Amanda was smart to use the charring technique on the corn, peaches, and veal. Um, Yeah, I think Danny here was really impressive in watching him cook in in just 20 minutes. Um, He showed a lot of technique with what you were saying with the grill. He kind of had an almost like an offset grill instead of that um, that fish touching the the grill grates directly he had another grill grate on top so that it cooked but didn't like get too right. burnt and and stick to the grill and things like that so this this was a perfect display of Danny's technique here and how clean and refined he is um, so I thought uh, you know he did really really well and uh, based on the comments what Danny was the winner of this quick fire. So he wins 20k and he's got a total of 25,000 in quick fire money. I mean, that's that's 10% of the whole pot. So that's that's not nothing. So it, 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 you're right. And I you know, like I said, I I'm looking at it from what the judges ask for and what the chefs give them. I asked for char. Give me that char. Everything was charred on on his on his dish from the avocado to the fish. Now when she did hers, 
I like the Charles Hurts. I really like the Charles Hurts. Yeah, which one, and Amanda? She put it on everything. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Amanda put it on everything. Yeah. Um. So I, I was, I was rooting for those two. Yeah, I, I think Danny out of the three, um, did really well here. Uh, just, just showing a lot of finesse in in twenty minutes. I mean, to cook, he basically cooked two dishes in forty minutes, and it's just insane. And it, it just reminds me again, I'm a I'm a fan and not a chef because there's no way I can come up with anything like that in 20 minutes. <laughs> just just the Rolodex in your head of, okay, I, I need this, I need this, and I got to cook it this way, and I got to cut it this way, and I got to plate it this way all in 20 minutes. Well, here's the thing. It, when, when, you, when you're in these competitions, you only have your experience to lean on. Right. So that's why I, I, always, tell the, I always tell the young chefs, don't don't limit yourself to one particular technique or cuisine because there's so many flavors that you can pull from. Look at look at um my, my, my girl Michelle. What she does and what they give her, she's pulling from everywhere. She'll use a grill when she can. She'll, you know what I'm saying? She pulls from everything. Um, all these chefs are just amazingly have different avenues to get where they are right now, different journeys. Mm-hmm. So that's what they're pulling from. And if you do something over and over again, it, 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 it tends to, to come into your head. And I, I think I said this before, I worked with a chef many, many years ago until this day, I still, I, I use it and I give it to other young cooks every day, come up with a new dish. You don't have to cook it. You just have to write it down. It doesn't make sense to anybody but you. Yeah. So that when someone says, hey, here's some sausage, what do you got? Here's some char, what do you got? You don't have to spend like, oh my God, what am I do with this? You've already created the cheat sheet in your head. Now you, that's your Rolodex that you just like, brrr, char. Yeah. Or you can just say, well, I steamed it, but I could, I could do the same dish and char it. Yeah. So that's what chefs have in their head is their experience that they've done that technique, not that recipe, but that technique before. And doing collaboration dinners with other chefs, it helps you build and grow your 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 culinary bag because I'd work with chefs and like a guy um up in uh, Charleston, Kevin Mitchell. I worked with him and he did this thing, <laughs> he did this thing called uh um, dirt. It was amazing. So now I see somebody else. This was years ago when he did this. Now they call it making soil. So you'll it it it's edible soil and things like that. So like I say, it just comes from your experience working with other chefs, being creative, and staying in the kitchen all the time. And to make your to give yourself that opportunity. That's what you have to do. Always stay in the kitchen on your grind. Yep. Yep. So let's get right into the elimination challenge. So they bring in another guest judge, Amar Santana, uh, who was on last season's um, World All-Stars and part of Team USA with Budalo and Sarah Bradley. Did really well there. Uh, So it was great to see him back in the Top Chef kitchen. Uh, For this challenge, the chefs are divided into teams. So you have the yellow team and the blue team. The yellow team uh, was Kalina, Michelle, Laura, and Amanda and Danny. The blue team was Kevin, Sue, Manny, Dan, and Savannah. I thought it was really funny how the team shook out. It was almost battle of the sexes. It was almost guys versus girls, and, and it was well, really the, interesting the how, was, how that worked out. That's what they said, and I was like, but the, the one twist was there was a guy on the girl team, and there was a girl on the guy team, and I was yeah. like, that that's that was interesting. That was an interesting little, little, little twist. So, um, But this time, they didn't have the that, like, oh, shit. A moment when they say team challenge. Yeah, yeah. I think you know they they come to expect okay, there's gonna be a team challenge. It's not not all gripe about it, but yeah, I thought it was interesting that none of them rolled their eyes or anything either. So maybe they got a good stern talking to behind the scenes and be yeah, like, yeah, don't do that. Look, don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. Be happy you're here, right? We want to we want to make people think you're happy you're here and that we're not holding you captive, right? Just <laughs> blink blink once if you're safe, right? So. <laughs> So the challenge took place at American Family Field uh, in in Milwaukee, home of the Milwaukee Brewers and the world-famous sausage race, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. 
Uh, so the challenge is baseball themed. So there's going to be five quote unquote innings of cooking featuring a different sausage. After each round, the judges will vote for the best dish of the inning. The team that wins the most votes wins the inning. The team that wins the most innings wins the challenge. So um, there's about 15 total judges made up of local chefs, sausage experts. They bring in actress Brittany Snow from Pitch Perfect. Um, and then, of course, you have Tom, Gale, and uh, Kristen. So what I thought is interesting about these types of challenges, it's not the first time they've done this type of challenge on Top Chef where it's kind of a team challenge, but it's still very individually focused, right? Because they're going head to head and they're not having to create like a progressive menu necessarily type of type of uh, thing. They're they're in teams and they're generating points at team as teams, but the, it's very individual. Um, so what, what do you think about this particular team challenge in, in this format? Well, I thought it was a little different. Like you say, it's, it's you know, you pick your, your sausage and you have to make that one. You're not depending on something else or someone else. Um, it's a team, but it's not a team. It's like wrestling. Uh, in high school wrestling, um, you know, you, you can go to state. You don't need a team to go to state with. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you can yeah. win this whole thing without your team. You know, that's why you, you there's winners for all this. So I thought it was interesting. And of course, I know we're gonna talk about it, but when it came to the shopping, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, we'll talk about that. So how how was the order decided? Well, the order was decided by the world famous sausage races. You had uh, five sausages uh, battling for contention in the order of how it was gonna go. If you've never been to a Milwaukee Brewers game, um, around the sixth inning. They have these guys dressed up in in these ridiculous sausage costumes, and they round the bases in a foot race. It's it's very cute, and I thought it was really funny in in the episode. So, uh, let's talk about a a little bit about um, the shopping, right? So, they, well, they talk about the menus. So they they break up, and then the menus are discussed. So Danny on the yellow team, uh, Danny has the has the immunity, so he offers to do the hot dog, which you know it's pretty basic. And he, it was funny when they were discussing the menu because they have a thousand dollars to shop at Whole Foods, and exactly. he and he looks directly <laughs> at Laura and says, basically, you're not going to screw me this time. Remember, I got my eye on you. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and then the rest of the breakdown: uh, Amanda has bratwurst. Uh, Kalina does the Italian sausage. Laura requests chorizo, and Michelle takes the Polish sausage. Um, and then, so Michelle said she's going to make an etouffee out of Polish sausage. I thought that's Polish sausage. You don't necessarily think with etouffee. You usually think andouille, maybe a smoked sausage, but what did you think? It's like etouffee with Polish sausage. Did you kind of were like scratching your head or what? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Like I said earlier, it's the technique. Don't worry about the recipe. It's the technique. And she thought that she can mix in her head. See, this is the thing you understand by chefs. In our heads, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> and we have to execute it in our head and then execute it on the plate. Going shopping and everything. And as she's shopping, that stuck in her head of texture, uh, color. Everything is going through her head when she's coming up with that. So we'll see how that turned out. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about the blue team and their strategy in a minute. So Dan decided he was going to take bratwurst. Uh, Manny wants the chorizo. Uh, Sue decides to take the hot dog. Um, he was, it was funny. He was nervous about it at first and they called it the vanilla flavor of all sausages, the, the humble hot dog. Um, but he also said it's such a neutral flavor that you can make it as crazy as he wants. And then he talks about this um, kind of Instagram foodie phase of the of Korean corn dogs. So he's going to kind of make a, a play on that. Um, Savannah takes on the Polish sausage that leaves Kevin with the Italian. Doesn't sound too happy about it, but uh, he said it's close to France. He was he was joking. Uh, so Kevin says he wants to make a risotto, which uh, you know last week we talked about. I felt like some of these chefs never watched Top Chef before, and then and then Kevin says he was a finalist <laughs> in Top Chef, and now he wants to make a risotto. Everybody and their mother knows you do not make risotto on Top Chef. You're you're just gonna mess it up. So, I I don't know. I, it, he's falling into that trap again, the risotto trap. It's a trap. And uh, it bit him at the end, unfortunately. 
it's that ego of, 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 of some chefs. They're like, I can make the best risotto. Damn what they did in the past. I'm the one that's going to just magically do this risotto and every judge is going to swoon over me and everything like that. And it's a, it's an ego thing. I, and, and like, like you say, some of these chefs, have you really watched top chef risotto is, <laughs> is like the kiss of death. It's always something that that's go wrong, whether the, the grains aren't cooked evenly or it's too tight or, I mean, one of my favorite chefs that was on top chef and I'm, I'm a, I've been a fan of his is Trey out of Texas. And, you know, yeah, I, I, I've been a big fan of him when he, when he did his risotto, it's like, so like I said, it, it's just that the egos, they like, I, I'm going to be the first one to do this. I mean, risotto is such a fussy dish. I mean, you have to stand over it. You can't leave it alone and go do something else. And you got to be constantly stirring it. And it, it takes a good 30, 40 minutes to make risotto. Just you're adding hot liquid a cup at a time. And it's just you to, to try to do that in a competition is is tough. But he thought he could pull it off. So we'll see. Well, try to do that at, 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 at trying to do that as a catering event and things like that. And I've been working with a different a couple of different techniques on how to do um, a good risotto that won't, you know, get gummy or anything like that. And one of the, one of the ones that I've been working with right now is um, a sous vide risotto. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. Like I said, stay in the kitchen, man. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Always working on uh. I mean, like I said, when I take my, my walks, um, that's, I put music on and, and things just pop into my head and like, and I'm always, you know, having collaborations with different chefs and things of that, of that nature. But yeah, so that's my, my new thing. I'm, I'm, I'm pondering it right now is uh sous vide risotto. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Cause you put it in the water bath, it cooks evenly take, you know, for a long period of time. So every, every grain is going to be cooked in the right way. So yeah. Let me know but how that turns out. Do that that interesting. In a competition though. See, oh, I think that would take too long. Yeah, 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 for sure. So as a result of the sausage race, uh, the battles are drawn. So it's going to be Danny versus Sue on hot dogs, Laura versus Manny on chorizo, Michelle and Savannah, Michelle, Michelle versus Savannah on the Polish sausage, Kalina versus Kevin on Italian, and Amanda versus Dan on the bratwurst. So as they were shopping, one thing I wanted to talk about again is Laura decided to make her own chorizo versus Manny using pre-made chorizo out of the out of the meat case. So Laura had a potential here again because if you're making your own sausage, you're you're buying a lot of ingredients to do that with. Had a potential to go over her budget, her allotted budget, but it was funny at the counter uh, at the register, Amanda was there and said, "Hey, if you go over 200, you need to stop." <laughs> She's like, you need to stop and, and look again. So it was a team effort corralling Laura in on her budget. So uh, no because, budget drama you know, this time. It, it's like I said before, when she does this, it hurts other people. And the sad part is she don't even win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, listen, like I, like I, if you're going to use steroids, you got, you, you got to win. <laughs> 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 if you're going to cheat, you got to win. If you, yeah. you don't get those extra little things, it should help you win and, and move up. And But it never works out in her favor. Yeah. Yeah. So looking at the meal service, let's talk about uh, the breakdown. So the first inning was uh, battle hot dogs between Sue and Danny. So Sue uh, made a corn dog with wasabi and jalapeno mayo. And Danny, uh, representing the yellow team, made a bacon-wrapped hot dog with braised cabbage and beef relish. So before we talk about those dishes for a minute, let's talk about hot dogs. So of all the sausages, Sue is right. It is the most basic. It's very vanilla. Uh, but do you find that hot dogs are like a blank canvas to, to really express yourself in other ways? Or, or do, you, do you go for something else in, in, a, in a sausage or, you know? A regular hot dog is pretty much like, um, like tofu has no it has has a little bit of flavor but it it's it's that open canvas where you can say i can i can make it if i wrap it in bacon if i if i top it with a tomato jam a uh, a cabbage relish and you know those type of things there 
it, it lends well with that. If the hot dog is a base, has a little bit of flavor, but the base of it is goes well with everything else. Um, even the bread. I mean, you 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 put it with the right piece of bread, it'll just you know make make the whole thing that much better. So yeah, you you can be very creative with that one. Versus, just a blank canvas. Right versus the chorizo. There's a lot of flavor in chorizo. Yeah, chorizo is very assertive. Right versus the hot dog, like you said, it's the, the vanilla, the tofu is like, I got something. Let's make something different. And as a chef, you just have to be that much more creative when you're doing, um, when you're trying to be, uh, make something special. Yeah. And talking about creativity, I mean, we talk about Sue a lot, but Sue is, is nothing if not creative on this, on this show so far. And to do the corn dog that he did, I mean, Danny's hot dog looked fancy. It looked, both of them looked great. Um, but to do a corn dog, I think, I think everybody was expecting a traditional hot dog in a bun. Um, but then he, he pulls out a corn dog, which sounds awesome. A wasabi and jalapeno mayo. That, that sounds great. Um, so the yeah. results, uh, so six votes for Danny, nine votes for Sue. So Sue wins the first inning, generates a point for his team. Uh, they said Sue's batter was a great, in, uh, a great proportion to the hot dog. So not too much batter, not too much hot dog, uh, and had a great fries. texture. What's that? <laughs> the French fries. Yeah. He, he made the batter with French fries, which I thought was really interesting. And then he put ginger in there to kind of tie it all together. Um, uh, and Brian Voltaggio said it was probably the most fun corn dog he's had in a long time, though, though he thought both dishes were incredible. So, uh, again, the level of cooking in this episode has stepped up a notch from the last, uh, couple of episodes. So the second inning was Polish sausage. We had Savannah on the blue team. She made a pierogi with fennel and apple, uh, salad, and then Michelle on the yellow team with her etouffee and creamy grits. I mean, it was a blowout. It was 13 to 13 to two for Michelle, which I think what, what, caught michelle as she made a good pierogi but it didn't have enough sausage it, it wasn't very sausage forward um right. and i think what um one thing that michelle's dish had is was hominess and Brittany uh said that it did remind her of home um so ryan felt it was far superior to ballpark food and it was an explosion of flavors tom clickio uh, did say that savannah's dish was excellent but again it needed more sausage so when you're talking about a sausage challenge you can't forget what the main ingredient is, right? You you got to make sure that that thing is sausage all over the place and it's being used creatively. But again, not a bad pierogi. Just Michelle did better with an with an etouffee with Polish Polish sausage. So there we go. And, Polish sausage worked like with said, etouffee. You know, she was very. She reached back from her experience. Now mm-hmm. keep in mind what I told you why I picked my 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 chefs, not right. what they not what they their resume said, but where they're from and their background, all the things there. And that's Michelle's background. So she like got this and she did it with confidence and kudos to her. Yep. So up next on the third inning is Italian sausage. We have Kevin representing the blue team. He made his risotto with roasted Parmesan emulsion and fennel. And Kalina with the yellow team made a potato gnocchi with Italian sausage and Calabrian chili ragu. Another blowout, 13 for Kalina and two for Kevin. Uh, Brittany thought it was a good risotto, but she said, I don't know any better, which is what I like about having these non-foodie um, <laughs> judges on here. They're like, hey, it tasted good to me. I mean, I, I don't eat risotto so much to, to be able to differentiate one from the other. Um, uh, and let's see, the texture of Kalina's gnocchi was, uh, fantastic. Uh, and the toppings amplified the flavors and Mark called it an absolutely perfect gnocchi. Tom thoughts Kevin dish had good flavor, but too much cheese, which, you know, I, I don't think I will ever say there's anything with too much cheese, but I guess a lot of Parmesan could be a lot of Parmesan. So, uh, but nevertheless, Gail does tell Kevin that this is one of the better risottos they've had in 20 seasons of the show, 21 seasons of the show. So, you know, it was a, he didn't win, but to say in 20 years, you made probably the best risotto on Top Chef, that's an accomplishment. And his his technique was he par-cooked it the day before and then finished it the day of. And uh, Tom said, well, how long does it take to cook risotto? He said, about 30 minutes. And he said, how long is the challenge? How long did you have this morning or today? 45. Why don't you just cook it to order? Because it the par-cooking and the cooking it today, it, I, I guess the kernel, the, the rice came out uneven. Uh, possibly, I, I don't know. What, what's your take on that? He could have he could have cooked it the day of to order. So, I know a lot of restaurants they par coat their risotto. Yeah. And then and then when you order it, 
they make it to they finish it to order and how can i say this and when they make it to order it's literally add the cream the butter wop, 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 and it's done we have to go back to see how how much of a par did he do did right. he do it three quarters of the way did he do it halfway and things of that nature and then the other thing about risotto is that you may have cooked it perfectly but if it sits too long it starts to the 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 carryover heat continues to cook it and now it becomes mush yeah it seizes up it becomes spackle and, and, and so like like tom said you know risotto is supposed to spread on the plate not clump on the plate yeah and so you know that like i said it's every chef has their way that they've done it and once again like i said last week if you go to his restaurant or he cooks this for you again oh it would be everything will be nice and tight because if, when chefs make mistakes, they will work hard to make sure that the next time you have it, it's going to be. Look, look at um, who's the chef that did the, the 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 greens for the dessert? Oh, Savannah. Yeah. Yeah, Savannah. Nine years ago, dude, like, dude, that's crap. Why are you going to do that? And she's like, I'm going to show you it's going to work. That's how chefs without egos think. Like, I'm I'm a, I'm I'm going to do this. Yep, so yep. um that was that was his his um that was his fault for not like I said, I don't know how far he parted and then and um uh, and cooked it at, at the stadium. But like Tom said, you got 45 minutes, take 30 minutes to cook. Why didn't you just make it there? Right. So exactly. I mean you have a team of chefs that are helping you on your team, they could have done all the other stuff. You just make a risotto. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. So fourth inning was chorizo. Uh, so you had Manny, who uh, on the blue team made a chorizo and cheese tatella with roasted salsa and avocado crema. Laura on the yellow team made a chorizo kebab taco with yogurt sauce. It was pretty close, uh, but Manny wins it nine to six. Uh, the only differentiating factor for Kristen is that Laura's spice level overpowered her dish a little. So in Laura making her own chorizo, um, made it a little bit too spicy and it was funny. Manny was, was plating his and he goes, man, shout out to whole foods for their chorizo. <laughs> Cause he didn't, he didn't make his own <laughs> chorizo. Uh, he, he used whole foods and you had a, a pro chef making her own chorizo and you have whole foods with, with their recipe for chorizo in the meat case and whole foods went out. So maybe go pick up some whole food chorizo. We'll see. Uh, well, at least Tom said, you know, at least she made it from scratch. Gotta yeah. give her that. <laughs> yeah, he he voted for he voted for Laura because he she made her own. So yeah, that right. that was uh that was interesting. So uh, I thought it was funny because Manny had a dad joke at the end. He said we wanted to make sure our pitch was perfect, you know, because Brittany yep. started yep. pitch perfect. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Negative two points you know to what? Manny for the dad joke. <laughs> when Manny when Manny got the chorizo, you know, I was like, oh, he's gonna kill this. Yeah, that's my boy, Manny. I was like, yeah, he's he's gonna really do well on this one. So. I wasn't surprised that he won, um, but yeah, I was just yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it was the. the you had it. I was like, yeah, okay, you, I see why you got you picked that one. Yeah, you had the two the two of Spanish Hispanic descent do chorizo, which kind of fell naturally to them, so right. that worked out. So the fifth inning, we had bratwurst. You have Dan representing the blue team. He made a potato pancake, charred cabbage, sauerkraut, mustard, butter, and herbs. Amanda on the yellow team made rye and caraway spatzel, caramelized onion with beer and mustard sauce, and crispy sauerkraut. Amanda won this by a mile, 12 votes to three, and she wins. It was tied up until that inning. So perfect storybook uh, ending there. You got two outs, you know, down by one run, and, and she she <laughs> smacks the winning run in. Uh, so the yellow team wins. Uh, Amanda, they said, did a great job adding layers of flavor. The crumble was um, what it did it for Tom, uh, but also thought the mustard sauce was really, really good. Uh, they did say both dishes were good, uh, but in the end, they said that uh, Amanda did a better job doing things with the sausage than Dan. Dan basically just made a pancake and sliced up some sausages and put it on top. Um, personally, I thought this is how you want a top chef elimination challenge to go. Uh, I, I was very happy to see how well everybody did. Um, and that we're kind of back to everybody cooking. Well, no one had better dishes. Some just had better dishes than others. Um, and I, I think a challenge works best when good dishes go home. And what I mean by that is you, you're watching kind of the judges deliberate and you don't know who's going to go home. 
versus you see a dish that's bad so bad that you know they're going to go home from a mile away you just you just see it happening so um i was really happy to see everybody cooking well again and that there were no bad dishes um just better dishes um what what did you think overall of the the judges or of the uh, elimination challenge everybody cooking i think you know coming especially coming from the chaos challenge to this one uh what do you think was the turning point that that this cook was so much better that had uh, probably a little bit more restrictions than the chaos one where it was basically just do what you want well the restrictions are what they used to yeah free you know you know going freestyle is not what they do they yeah. they have restrictions and so that brought them back to home base um, and then after the chaos, it, it threw them off balance. So they wanted to get back on balance and being back on balance is what the, what that structure gave back to them. Yeah. And isn't that what chefs so do really? Like, okay. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what chefs do is they bring order to chaos, right? You have this like spread of ingredients spread all over the place, and your job as a chef is to take that chaos of ingredients and make a composed, refined, and orderly dish. You bring order to chaos, and I think that's where everybody got threw off last time. Is you're telling me to take chaos and make chaos, and I I don't know how to do that as a chef. I I, I do things orderly and I do things in a refined way. Well, as you as you see the dishes. They all did pretty much a, a a basic something that you get when you go to the ballpark, a sausage dog. Yeah. Okay. But putting that sausage in the hands of a chef, their mind thinks totally different than every like who who has a pierogi at a baseball game? You know, who does a wasabi mayo and all these different flavors? Who does uh etouffee with grits at a ballpark? Yeah. Now, if the ballparks were very, you know, into a top chef, they were like, hey, Michelle, I need you to come and teach this dish at our place. Um, I need, you know, Manny, I need you to do this. Uh, uh, you know, that's why they do what they do. So they're putting that sausage in the hand of someone like that is just totally, it's like putting a sword in, in a ninja's hand. It's going to be just amazingly on point. Yeah. A hot dog in my hand comes out very differently than a hot dog in Sue's hand. That's that is for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. So let's talk about judges' table. So the yellow team won. So the top three, uh, the top three on the yellow team were Amanda, Michelle, and Kalina, and the winner was Michelle. So Michelle wins the elimination challenge. So this is her second elimination victory, and especially coming off of being in the bottom two last week and with the threat of double elimination still kind of hanging out there, like. She she did really well, and like she said at the beginning in her interview, she's like, you know, it, it kicked me in the ass, and it's giving me every day to to prove that I'm that I'm supposed to be here. And she did really well. What, what do you think about Michelle winning? That's your that's your uh, draft pick. That's my draft pick, and I'm I'm so proud of her because she is doing her thing. And I've said this when we started picking teams, she is a a a, a black woman in a boys club and so i knew that she she had it in her because she has something to prove and she has this desire to to show you that she can dig in her bag and pull out what you what what you're not expecting from her um and i, I let me just say this all the women that's that's participating in this are that what i said at the beginning they have something to prove in this boys club, like they belong in this boys club. And the cooking profession is a boys club. Uh, don't let nobody fool you. It's a boys club. So when you find women in this boys club ex excelling and just doing their thing, I'm a fan of them. And they they just set a standard for everybody else. I mean, yeah, I, but... I know I know a bunch of female chefs that have broken the glass ceiling shattered it and people like wow i didn't even know you can do that and so that's why I've, I've been a big component of the females on top chef yeah the women are killing it on top chef this season i mean you have michelle doing really well even Roska being eliminated she did really well while she was in there um savannah is is cooking well kalina's cooking with a new 
vision uh, so after making it through Last Chance Kitchen. So, yeah, the women are doing really well. So on the bottom, uh, the on the blue team, you had the three that lost their head-to-head. You had Kevin, Savannah, and Dan that were on the bottom uh, three. And eliminated was Kevin. And I think his fine timely came due. He was, he's been on the bottom a lot. And you can only ride the bottom <laughs> for so long until it you know, falls out from under you. Um, ironically, though, the risotto was fine. The The risotto was, was okay. It just wasn't sausage forward enough. They said there was way too much cheese on there. Um, Brittany, when they were deliberating, actually said that it, it was a really good mac and cheese dish, <laughs> which is not what you want with risotto. Um, and, you know, it, if, it, if it was battle Parmesan, I think he might have won, but it, it wasn't. It, he had one little slice of sausage on there. I don't even know if he cooked the risotto with sausage, but it just wasn't sausage forward enough. Just too much it, cheese. It, it, it was, and th- well, here's the thing. When you say you have too much, not just cheese, but Parmesan cheese, I want to say, was it salty? Salty, yeah, for sure. He, I don't think he bounced yeah. it out with any other kind of cheese. Right. So, um, and then he put the the foam on it, with, which is a salty, then the cheese in it, which is salty. I'm sure he added salt to that. Plus the sausages have salt, you know, just yeah, this whole big thing. And, and all you saw was just that one piece of sausage hanging out on, on the side um and like like they said amazing risotto just not a risotto challenge yeah not a risotto challenge and not a parmesan cheese challenge so kevin's eliminated he immediately goes to last chance kitchen so let's talk about that for a minute last chance kitchen was kevin versus rosica right so rosica uh-huh. on the on the interview says it was my first time that i was on the bottom and it was the first time on the bottom and out the door so it's bad to be on the bottom but your first time and then eliminated right after that she said it was such a a bad dish that i got eliminated so it's definitely a punch in the gut and she said she has some unfinished business with top chef so it does feel weird with rosca here in lck she was an early favorite uh she won uh won two elimination challenges and a quick fire i I had her pegged as an early finalist uh she was i I, I was saying it's gonna be sue and rosica and unfortunately that's not gonna happen um but this challenge was insane. So the challenge was make as many dishes as you can up to nine uh, in 45 minutes. And again, baseball themed. So nine dishes, nine innings. You don't have to make nine. You can make up to nine, but you have 45 minutes to make as many dishes as you can. They're going to serve them to Tom as soon as they're done. And he's going to score them on a scale of zero to four. The chef with the most points wins. So it's not necessarily who makes the most dishes. It's the quality of the dishes. So it's not not quantity, but quality. So I want to think about this challenge for just a second. So crazy. 45 minutes to create as many dishes as you can. Like what, what's going through your head when you heard that? Did you pause it and go, oh my God. I mean, nope. even, even me, nope. I was like, I was like nope. 45, there's no way I could do 40. What, what's the, the key to a chef being able to do that, to make that many, as many dishes as you can in 45 minutes? Is it trying to use the same ingredients different ways you know, kind of like Taco Bell, it's the same like five ingredients and they got 15 different menu items or whatever. So what, walk me through that that mindset. So that mindset is you got 45 minutes to create as many dishes as possible. First thing is prep, okay? And I think, and, and not in my head, if it was me, I would have, thought about, you know, dishes that I can make in seven minutes, seven to nine minutes, every 79 minutes. Um, but here's the key, have something left over to start your next dish. Because if you look at it, they didn't turn in their first dish for the first 30 minutes. Yeah, it was like, tw- yeah, it was like 20 minutes before they turned in their first dish. They burned half so, the time on their first dish. Right. So I would have started putting, I would have started putting dishes together. The last dish that that uh, that he put up, that little bullshit ass dish for a <laughs> point. When he put, I said, "Oh, he's just trying to get a point." He don't even. It, it, all you want is a point. So you could have did a bunch of appetizers that really wanted to to get points. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if if every dish you put up, if you put up seven dishes, six dishes. And each one in there was two points. <laughs> you're looking at you're looking at twelve runs. Yeah, I mean that's that's what Tom was saying. Strategy was involved there. You could, you could put up nine 
appetizer dishes at one point a piece, or you could put, you know, three grand slam dishes, right? So, so there's some some I, strategy involved with that. Right. So I would have just started putting out little little appetizer, little tapas, made the whole thing tapas, little pieces, do do do, chart real quick, da da da, send it up. I don't know why it took them 30 minutes to put up one dish. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, it was, that, I still can't wrap my head around that. Yeah, half their time was on their first dish. Let's talk about the breakdown of the dishes. So Rasika, she put up four dishes. Uh, she put up a rice uh, payasam, a berber eggplant. Um, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. BC Belle Bath, which is rice and lentils with roasted potato curry and a sea bass. So she was trying to do like an Indian five-course meal, ended up with four courses. So Tom was tasting them and kind of commenting to himself because they were all cooking like madmen in the kitchen. And so he's kind of talking. And so he gives one point uh, for the rice uh, payasam, gives two points for the berber eggplant, uh, gives two points to the rice and lentils or roasted potato curry, and one point for the final sea bass. So Kevin does a roasted lamb, uh, scallop and butternut puree, uh, and some sort of like... Per, per, uh, French vinaigrette with chive and parsley salad, uh, a charred butter lemon with salmon, and then the last last second dish you were talking about. Literally, I think he was putting it together with ten seconds left on the clock. Nice. Uh, a last second smoked salmon with dill cream. So he put five dishes up against Rasika's four. Or Rasika's four. So the roasted lamb, his first dish gets him three points. Uh, the scallop dish gave him two points. The vinaigrette with chive and parsley salad gave him one point. And then the butter lettuce with salmon gave him one point. And then that last second, three seconds, you know, dish gave him one point. So uh, Rosica earns six points and Kevin earns eight points. So by virtue of that, Kevin wins last chance kitchen and Rosica is gone, like gone, gone. Uh, so you, you got to do you think this is an upset a little bit? Do, do you kind of think that yeah. this this is definitely yeah. an upset type of win? Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. I feel bad for Rosica because she was trying to put together a meal. Tom didn't ask for a meal. He asked for dishes. Right. Dishes versus, you know what I'm saying? A meal, yeah. you're going to win out every time. Because if you look at his dish, his, his all his dishes, they, they don't go together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right there. Roscoe was <laughs> trying to Roscoe was trying to put together like a composed progressive meal almost, and yeah. and Kevin was like, I'm just going to put the five fastest dish I can think of together and and hope it tastes good. Um, so a couple of things Tom was saying about Kevin was like it was unseasoned or something like that, but he he but made he more. He didn't care about that. He only cared about get as long as I get a point. Every time I put something up, I'm good. That's yeah. why. He he would thought that she was gonna put up an extra dish, so he's like, "Let me put this little thing together." Da, 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 da. But because yep. that didn't he have that sauce already made, and he just put it on something, and the the and here's the thing: what chefs do, they make it sound amazing. Alaskan uh, smoked salmon, dude, you pick that up over there, you already had yeah. it. And, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. He basically made a dish. I think he made a dish out of leftovers out of another dish. Yeah. And, so you're talking about he was trying to put just dishes up to get points and and kind of that's that's moneyball baseball right i mean if you ever seen the movie moneyball the 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 point of that movie was you know you're you're looking at players in a different way you don't you know the yankees want to have a team full of Derek jeters that can just smack home runs all day long while the oakland a's and moneyball wanted people that could just get on base right just get on base right. and and so that's kind of what kevin was doing is he he was trying to get people on base and by virtue of doing that he he won eight to six. So, yeah, I think it was a, a little bit of an upset uh, against Rosica. You know, I hate to see Rosica go. She she did really well uh, in the challenge. Won three challenges throughout her uh, stay in Top Chef, and and I hate to see her go in her first last chance kitchen. But I Kevin know. gets Kevin gets a little extra life, and we'll we'll see him in another last chance kitchen uh, next week. So Kevin wins. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But you know what's funny is when he when he won. My thing was, did he did he lose at the right time not to do restaurant wars because oh of his, yeah that's of, uh... of his arrogance that may rub against other people in a restaurant environment. 
<laughs> that's that's an interesting take. Last Chance Kitchen kind of kind of does give you that little bit of an advantage, right? If you lose early, you can kind of get back in, and then if you lose late, you get you get past Restaurant Wars. Uh, that's a that's an interesting that's an interesting take. He's not going to be in Restaurant Wars next week, but if he wins through Last Chance, basically a series of quick fires over the next couple of weeks, he could be back in without having to do the hard work of Restaurant Wars. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. That's, that's, uh, restaurant wars, is, restaurant wars is, 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 is the, the, the peak. <laughs> it's, it's the, it's the gauntlet, right? That's what yeah. everybody, everybody's first initial goal is to get to restaurant wars before winning the whole thing. Um, and that's, there's a reason why that particular challenge is the seminal challenge in every single season. But here's the thing about restaurant wars too. You've been watching rest, uh, top chef for a while, right? Oh yeah. Think about how much better the food and plating gets after restaurant wars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause you, you go, you go through it in restaurant wars. You, you come out a different person after restaurant wars. So that's, that's next week, which I'm very excited to see how that, how that goes. So let's do a draft point update. So quick fire winner was Danny. Get you five points. So Danny was on your team. Uh, top of the judges' table was Amanda and Kalina and Michelle. Now, Michelle won the Elimination Challenge, so she gets seven points. Amanda and Kalina get three points each uh, for being at the top of the judges' table. They were on my team, so yay. Uh, on the bottom was Kevin, so he would have gotten negative two points, but because he won Last Chance Kitchen, he actually gets those two points back, so he has uh, actually a net score of zero. And then Savannah and Dan were also on my team, but they get negative two points each. Uh, and, and then, so that brings our episode totals to team Southern passion lounge, 10 points for the episode. I get four. And then for the show totals, you have 70, that's seven, zero 70 and 22 for me. So, uh, episode to date. So we talked about restaurant wars and restaurant wars is kind of our, our draft trade deadline. Uh, anything we no trades are, are allowed after restaurant wars. Dare I say with a score of 70 to 22, are you looking to trade anybody on your team? Do you offer me a trade, a trade? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 keep my team. But here's the thing though. Here's the thing. As a, as a fan of, cooking a, a I love cooking and I love watching chefs do their thing um I'm in restaurant wars I'm really looking to see where the teamwork comes in from everybody you know they've been doing everything they've had team challenges and things like that but this is a whole different ball game for them oh, a whole yeah. different ball game yeah and so I as far as the cooking goes, of course, I want to see what Sue does. Got to see what he's going to do. Yeah. Amanda, um, Manny, Danny. Um, I'm just looking to see what, 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 where this pushes everybody's limits. Because this is, and I said this many times on, on, on our podcast, there's a lot of cooking left to be done. And restaurant wars, there can be People on both teams dropping like flies. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna predict a double elimination at restaurant wars. So we still have the double elimination hanging out there. Um, my predictions have been crap so far this year, but I'm predicting a double elimination in restaurant wars because restaurant wars does have a way of putting you through the ringer. And I, I think what's gonna be some some drama I'm gonna be looking out for is how is Laura gonna do. Because, yeah. you know, she she was kind of turning into the villain when there wasn't really any high stakes pressure. So when you turn up the heat and you really, you know, start putting the screws to these chefs during restaurant wars, how is she going to react? Right. How is she going right. to how is she going to do on her team? Uh, so things like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how Michelle does. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how Sue does. Uh, so restaurant wars next week. I'm looking forward to it. So. Uh, chef, uh, again, thank you for, for joining me. Give you the last few minutes here. Um, just promote anything you got going on in the next couple of weeks, what you got going on. Uh, next couple of weeks, I, uh, th my, my, um, <laughs> have a Scott's tasting that that's, uh, coming up. Um, uh, man, that's going to be a lot of fun. And of course the big one is my birthday is next month. So I'm, I'll be doing tastings 
leading up to that. And if you want more information on that, uh, make sure you hit me on uh, on either my Instagram at Chef Amadeus, my Facebook um, fans of Chef Amadeus, or my website at chefamadeus.net. And because this uh, these things are going to be uh, invite only, you'll get an email, special email, and all that good stuff. So, so go to my website, go to my uh, social media, and uh, inquire about that, and we'll, we'll put you on the list. Yeah, exclusive birthday dinner tasting with Chef Amadeus. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely go check that out. And don't forget to follow me on socials, Insta, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, at Rich Rare, and at uh, Eat Your Content. And make sure, again, to follow all the podcast happenings on your favorite podcast player choice so you know when new episodes are going to drop. Chef, thank you again so much for your time this week. It was fun. Looking forward to Restaurant Always. Wars next week and see how we do. Oh, man, that's going to be that's going to be crazy. So, yeah, I look forward to next week. Though.